In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. One thing that we have talked a lot about today is the movie Unplanned. And I think that that makes sense because it is such an important movie, and I, I hope that it's a movie that makes a real difference in this country. I don't know that it will. I don't know if a lot of people that were sort of on the fence about abortion or maybe even for abortion will go see it, and it will change their mind. But whether it does or not, it's an important movie for people to see because it does portray a lot of real human truths. And one thing that I talked about is that it really portrayed, and I do think this may be the most important thing that this movie does, it really portrayed the main character, who was somebody who was a director at an abortion clinic in Planned Parenthood's Employee of the Year, as somebody that thought she was doing the right thing. And when I thought about that, and when I saw that movie, I thought about Paul. The Apostle Paul was somebody who believed he was doing the right thing and got a rude awakening on the road to Damascus to realize that he had not. And, and I do think that there were some parallels with this film, and I did want to bring that up. So let's go ahead and go to Philippians 3, verses 5 through 6. Circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness which the law, which is in the law, found blameless. Now, one thing that Paul is doing here is he's talking to a group of people that were putting a lot of emphasis on their lineage. They were very proud of the fact that they were Jews. And so he's trying to explain to them, look, I wasn't just a Jew. I was the Jewiest of all the Jews if that's appropriate to say. Uh, you're talking about somebody that had a reason to be proud of his Judaism. It was me. I wasn't just a Jew. I knew that I was of the tribe of Benjamin. And I was a Pharisee, which is the most zealous of all the sects. And I was somebody that actually went out and persecuted the church because I thought it was the right thing to do. And when you look down at that, when you look at this particular verse, he talks about being a persecutor of the church because of how zealous he was, because he thought he was doing God's work. And he also talks about how he had been found blameless. So what Paul is essentially saying and, and explaining to the church here at Philippi, he's like, look, I wasn't just outside the church. I wasn't just lost and kind of benign and wandering around aimlessly. I was public enemy number one. It was my point to eradicate everybody that worshiped Jesus. That's how serious he was about it. And it's kind of similar to Abby Johnson's story. Somebody that went out and not only was a supporter of Planned Parenthood sort of in a benign way, she went out and recruited people, she sold abortions, she made the case to people that what they were doing was the right thing to do. That was her job, and she did it for eight years. And so this is somebody that did a complete 180 about as dramatic as a turnaround can be. And I want you to remember that in Acts, there were brethren that were scared of Paul. I mean, terrified. In fact, the brother that was specifically asked to go out and teach Paul and to go baptize him. When the Lord spoke to him, he basically told the Lord, I mean, he didn't say no outright, but he was kind of like, are you sure about this God? I've heard about this guy, and, and this is not somebody that we want on our side. And there is an indication based on some of the history we can piece together from the Bible, even though we don't know a ton about the three years after uh, Paul was baptized. We do know that there are accounts of people that were afraid of Paul and didn't really trust him because they thought maybe it was a trick 
or some kind of trap, or he was trying to infiltrate them or something. But they were afraid of Paul because of how zealous he was to take out Christians, to kill them unless they renounced Christianity. That's how serious Paul was about this. And I think looking back on that and looking at Abby Johnson's story, the message is actually pretty similar. Because if you're looking at the, the last part of verse 6 here, he says, As to zeal a persecutor of the church, and as to righteousness which is in the law, found blameless. What is Paul saying there? He's saying, I murdered Christians. It was my mission in life, and I did it with a clear conscience. I did it believing I was actually doing God's work in doing this. And to have that kind of turnaround and that kind of repentance is kind of similar to Abby Johnson's story. But it's not completely dissimilar to our story either. Maybe not in a very visual way or in a way that people would understand the parallel that quickly. But weren't we all enemies of Christ? Enemies of God before we came to Christ? Enemies of the church before we were redeemed of our sins and washed in his blood? Isn't that what we were? Maybe we were more or less active on it, but when you sum it all up, yeah, that's exactly what we were. And so I think that it's really important for us to remember that when we're talking to somebody, even somebody that has a lot of sin in their past, that we really were in the same boat. And I think that it also acts as a a very visual cautionary tale. Because to us, sometimes things seem right, and because of our finite human knowledge and human imperfection, it seems right to us. And because of that, we go ahead and do it even though it happens to be the wrong thing. And usually that happens when somebody lies to themselves. Abby Johnson lied to herself for years that she was helping these women. These women came to her for help. And instead of really helping them, she told them that killing their own children was the right thing to do. And Paul thought that he was doing God's will, that he was actually acting on God's behalf by murdering people that worshipped his son. And when you think of the gravity of that, it really does make you wonder how they even dealt with how they dealt with that burden. But the thing is, regardless of what you have going on in your life, I want you to remember this. God's strongest soldiers get the heaviest swords. And what that means is, they've got a lot to carry around. But he gives it to them because he knows they'll be able to carry it. He knows they'll be able to wield it. And with a heavy sword, you can do a lot more good for his, for his kingdom. You're a much better soldier for him. Because Paul used his experience as somebody who used to persecute the church to let people know that if I can be a Christian, anybody can. And I think in a similar way, Abby Johnson's story can show us, if I can become pro-life, anybody can. There is forgiveness and there is redemption. There is no sin. There is no life that is so stained, that is so marred, that God can't take it and turn it into something good for him. So you may have to carry a really heavy sword, but it's one that you can use to do a lot of good for God's kingdom. And that's true of any of us. Stay the course, friends. Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. But the truth is, I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. 
I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom. Boom. 